Stand, maybe stand. I'm just going to put it. Good morning. My name is uh, David Metzner. I am the uh, vice chairman of the board of trustees here at the Woodrow Wilson Center. Um, I was appointed to this position by President Bush because this institution, unlike many others in Washington, is part of the United States government. It was founded by an act of Congress to honor the only president to have a PhD, Woodrow Wilson. Hence, we do not take positions on the right or the left. We're an institution of higher learning and a place that is open to dialogue of all, of all sides. In the past years, we've had a diverse group of national leaders from President Bush to President Noe of uh, South Korea, uh, Prime Minister of Denmark, and a variety of other heads of state come here uh, to share with us their perspectives on, on critical issues facing their nations. Today, we are honored to have Reza Bogatirova join us um, to give us some insight into the Ukraine. Uh, as many of you know, she leads the largest bloc in the parliament and has been instrumental in negotiating what will be new elections this September. I think what many people may not know is that she's also a physician and has taken a very, very keen issue in, in medical issues as they affect her nation. Um, we, we, we welcome you doctor here to the Woodrow Wilson Center. It's truly an honor to have you with us today. I'd like at this moment to turn the mic over to Blair Rubel, who is the director of the Kennan Institute on the UK and Ru Ukraine and Russia. I think many people may know that the Kennan Institute is probably one of the premier research institutions on not only the bilateral relationship between our nation and those nations, but what actually is going on in those countries. Maintains offices in Kiev and Moscow uh, and has been part of the Woodrow Wilson Center since 1974. Interestingly enough, most people don't realize that the Kennan Institute was, was, named, after, uh, at the, was named after George Kennan's, I believe, grandfather, who was a great explorer of Russia and Siberia. But it was done with George Kennan's blessing and his encouragement. And we are very proud to have the Kennan family name associated with the Woodrow Wilson Center. So once again, thank you so much, and I'd like to turn this over to Blair. Thank you. Thank you, thank you David. I um, want to begin just by mentioning our Wilson Center colleague, Hala Sandiari, who has been held in solitary confinement in Tehran for the past 72 days. Uh, I think all of us at the Wilson Center are very concerned about Hala's well-being, and we're particularly concerned at the uh, TV presentation that has been shown, and apparently uh, there'll be more to follow this week. And uh, she th is supposed to have, quote, unquote, confessed <coughs> to fomenting a uh, revolution in Georgia, which is a totally grotesque and absurd charge. So we ask that you keep Hala in your thoughts and prayers as everyone here does, and we hope uh, that she will be back soon and that uh, no one anywhere has to go through what um, she's been put through uh, in Tehran. As David mentioned, we're an official presidential memorial to Woodrow Wilson. And, and, <clears throat> excuse me. And Woodrow Wilson, as he mentioned, it's the tagline at the Wilson Center, is the only American president to hold a PhD. What this means is that we are to try to memorialize Wilson by celebrating the union of the world of ideas and the world of public affairs. So it's always a pleasure, a particular pleasure, to be able to introduce a speaker 
whose career personifies the Wilsonian connection between thought and action. Before I uh, say a few more words about uh, Deputy Bogatyryova, I just want to mention also that uh, People's Deputy Dmitry Syatish is here on the stage, and he will not be making formal remarks, but I suspect as a good politician from any country, let alone from a vibrant country such as Ukraine, he may want to jump in at, at some moment during our proceedings, and we would welcome that. Deputy Bogatyryova, I think, represents a characteristic about Ukraine that is shared with the United States. It's the ability of people from rather humble backgrounds to rise to great heights. She was born to a family of workers and actually began her career as a seamstress in a clothing factory. But while she was working as a seamstress, she was also going to medical school and she graduated from the Luhansk Medical Institute. She was a student of considerable distinction, and she moved quickly into medical care, and she eventually became the deputy chief doctor for organizing assistance for children and mothers at the Kramatorsk Central City Hospital. During the upheavals of the perestroika period, she entered politics, and launched what has become a second successful career as a politician. But she has never turned her back on the earlier experience of caring for children and for women. She was elected a deputy. She became first deputy minister of health and then minister in 1999. She was appointed scientific advisor to the president of Ukraine. <laughs> She was first elected uh, to the uh, Verkhovna Rada in uh, June 2000 from District 41 in the Donetsk region, and she's been re-elected twice since. And I, as I think most of you in this room more than understand, uh, she's not just a member of the Rada, she's a particularly visible and outspoken member of the Rada. So it is with great pleasure that I now turn the podium over to Deputy Bogatryova. Thank you. Щиро дякую за надану можливість сьогодні мати нагоду виступити перед вами і хочу всіх нас привітати сьогодні в цій залі і побажати і собі в першу чергу впевненості і нам взаєморозуміння при сьогоднішній зустрічі. Сьогодні, шановні друзі, я хочу презентувати вам Україну, свою країну молоду і новітню державу, що, хоча й складно, але досить вперто шукає свого місця у світовій системі демократії. Висока честь сьогодні для мене озвучити сьогодні власні думки тут, у Вашингтоні, де більшість політиків світу шукає відповідь на багато питань і шукає можливість переконати американську націю у щирості своїх намірів, ефективності своїх планів та прогресивності своїх ідей. Ми, українці, близькі до Америки, не дивлячись на глобус. Схожі, в першу чергу, боротьбою за свободу, яка велась українцями майже Проголошення незалежності нашої держави у 1991 році. Ми ж, українці, з такими ж амбіціями, як і ви, послідовно намагаємось сьогодні гуртувати українців і будувати сильну Україну, демократичну Україну, країну, відкриту до діалогу з усім світом. І ми, як і ви, хочемо миру, хочемо процвітання своїм людям. Ми не на
uh, addressing uh, a new uh, number of controversial issues while pursuing the goal of institutional rule of law as the main protector of our young democracy. We are also close to you because there is a lot of Ukrainian blood in the veins of Americans. The blood is freedom-loving, strong, and honest. Abra Abraham Lincoln conferred the rank of brigadier general onto his friend Ivan Turchin, a hero of the Civil War. He was born in Ukraine. He was loved for his bravery and devotion to the cause of freedom, and he was often referred to as the Mad Cossack. And I'm sure that uh, this idea, his life story, would be uh, provide a brilliant plot for Hollywood, and a movie about him would help open Ukraine to Americans who are so very fond of democracy, freedom, and equality, and to develop and build democratic society. At the same time, we are also very different. It goes without uh, saying. Uh, you are, you Americans are a leader of the civilization. Uh, we are young democracy, which is only making its first steps and is trying to gain its place in the highly dynamic globalized world. Despite the fact that Pompeius Claudius, a famous Roman historian, called us college or the most ancient nation in the world, we in reality only gained our freedom and independence as a result of collapse uh, of the totalitarian system just recently. This uh, very process of uh, um, um, dismantling uh, the system has delayed the development of the Ukrainian nation for 100 years and is not over yet. We are experiencing it both in the development of our nation and inside our hearts and minds. It is the process that involves a number of difficult problems which are we which we are trying to overcome so far. This is something that I would like to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, as a, a citizen, as a politician, and one of the representatives of large political uh, force, the so-called party of Reason. Today, our party is at the government. It uh, created, according to the Constitution of Ukraine, together with the President of Ukraine, Viktor Yushchenko, anti-crisis government, uh, which was led of the representative of Eastern Industrial part of our country, Viktor Yanukovych. Today, we uh, assumed responsibility for governing Ukraine when it became obvious that the political partners uh, of presidents who are our political opponents today and our orange political forces, after a long discussion, after election of March 2006, were not able to form a coalition. What uh, brought us, Party of Region, to create anti-crisis uh, uh, coalition with socialists and communists? We remember those years when in, in the country the situation was very difficult with regard to social economy and our un unwillingness to go back to uh, complicated economic times and our unwillingness to see uh, the, the increase of internal and external debt and our uh, unwillingness to make our country dependent upon the a country uh, which supplies energy and our unwillingness to see the inflation rise to start processes of bankruptcy uh, to increase the uh, uh, crime, this uh, uh, unwillingness made us to create anti-crisis coalition, uh, creating a government which worked almost a whole year. Today, we were able to stop a lot of crisis tendencies in economy, and today we want to tell you that as a result of Yanukovych's government work, we have one of the highest integral uh, uh, indicators of the development of economy, economy and high uh, pace of GNP growth in uh, the area. We have the lowest inflation. We have, today, we have an opportunity to 
dynamically increase uh, salaries and pensions to our people. We have an opportunity to, to, in, uh, to introduce financial mechanisms uh, and financial uh, credits in uh, very important areas of economy. First of all, agriculture, agribusiness, and construction. But all of these uh, changes uh, were occurring uh, on the basis of the fight of for power. We were not able um, to find consensus with our political opponents, and we saw the political crisis in March, April of this year. President of our country uh, was had the, his position and uh, became on the side of political minority without constitutional leverages to dismiss the parliament. But the president deviated from the principle and he uh, used other categories in attempt to resolve the conflict, political uh, categories in attempt to resolve the conflict. So nevertheless, we are open to dialogue dialogue and are ready to take all of the reasonable requests of the opposition into account and introduce all the changes together with the president of Ukraine that we believe is, uh, are important for our society. This is our position today and we demonstrated it when the Prime Minister Yanukovych, the leader of Party of Regions and the head of the Verkhovna Rada of uh, Moroz signed together with uh, the president mission for political uh, announcement, a political um, decree, according to which uh, the political crisis shall be solved through early parliamentary election on September 30th, 2007. If only this would be the end of the political crisis in the country, we would be um, fine and uh, uh, knew that Ukrainians would make their choice and would give power to those who they trust most. But today, the situation that we see in Ukraine and the co both constitutional and institutional crisis still uh, are very complicated, uh, complicate the situation, political situation in Ukraine. Today, this situation has been further complicated by the limited potential of our national development under the situation when the renewable model of growth has virtually exhausted ex itself. A new political conflict would conserve crisis-born processes in our economy and social uh, sphere. This conflict would inevitably force a new government to carry out the policy of curbing various crisis phenomena. There is a great danger that the goals of the long-term social and economic development may be put on a low burner. The central scene would be occupied by the political struggle as a mean of implementing ambitions of certain politicians. Party of the re of Regions understands that we, will we are aware of the fact that the only way to evade a strategic vacuum of the national development and overcome the in inertia that was built up over the years is to proceed to a new economic architecture, namely to innovation and investment growth. We urgently need an investment strategy as a key factor of the development of our country. Otherwise, the uh, deepened fight will narrow the strategic horizon of our opportunities and would endanger the very integrity of Ukraine. Uh, to we need an, uh, to adequately assess the situation and proceed to the policy of strict and pragmatic economic and political relations. I call it the policy of national pragma pragmatism. I'm sure that this uh, that it is uh, the only way that we can open a window of strategic opportunities and turn the Ukrainian economy into efficient and competitive component of the modern world system. At the same time, even now, while preparing for dialogue for with our electorate on the verge of the extraordinary parliamentary election in Ukraine, the party of region is discussing the strategic program of consistent and long-term development of Ukraine while taking into account the geopolitical situation and its natural manufacturing and labor resources. At the same time, we also try to take into account new challenges of the political nature both inside of the country and 
in the whole world. There are, as uh, we say, that all good things come in threes. That's I would like to give you three reasons that uh, will require today's uh, discussion. The first imperial challenge that uh, shall be deemed as the political struggle of power, which has been lasting for um, uh, the last 15 years. This fight uh, can be explained by the lack of experience on the part of Ukrainians of how to govern their own country and also by the complete dependence of the Ukrainian economy on the monopoly of imports of energy by mistaken in mapping our the, uh, out the strategy of national development and by the lack of consolidation with the Ukrainian political elite, by its internal struggle for power and the lack of joint action Ukraine by political forces that, that would be aimed at serving national interests. The Ukrainian constitution that uh, is 209 years younger than the Constitution of the United States has failed to become the basis for st statehood and creation of political systems of power in Ukraine, a force that would consistently and efficiently develop and strengthen state institutions. The Ukrainian political nation was about to be born while the civic society was not consolidated at all. The power was being abused. The right and freedoms of people violated. The signs of the political authoritarianism uh, became uh, but obvious. We were sure that we should find a way out of the national de depression by means of expanding the functions of the parliament and assuming, uh, assuming bigger responsibilities by the political parties for managing this country. Meanwhile, amendments introduced into the Constitution in 2004 only inflamed the political struggle at the uh, same time between the candidates at that time, Yanukovych and Yushchenko. And that Constitution was passed in a very complicated condition. And today we understand that the Constitution is uh, not perfect and uh, the we need to adopt a number of laws pertaining to the main law of the land and we need to improve the constitutional reform. This, uh, all these uh, changes and problems with the changes and absence of laws that uh, would uh, regulate the cooperation between the branch was the re were the reasons of for the conflicts, uh, political conflicts in our country. Currently, all of the political forces preparing for the uh, early elections are carrying out a debate regarding the adoption of the new version of the Constitution. With the constitutional changes, President Yushchenko supports the initiative as well of the constitutional changes. He has already suggested that it should be confirmed at the referendum and that we would proceed to a two-chamber parliament while giving up the deputies' immunity. In my opinion, there is a danger of a vicious circle or uh, uh, when we see the road forward, but we are going around as we are going around some mysterious magic ring that is turning us into slaves. The early election, parliamentary election are not going to change the political status quo in Ukraine. The party of regions has expanded its dialogue with the electorate. According to the polling today, uh, the we are going to be um, supported by over 32% of electorate. President Yushchenko has already stated that in the event of, of, of party of region gaining the majority, uh, it, uh, he shall be prepared to nominate uh, Yanukovych as a candidate for the position of prime minister. He would be agreed to it for the next uh, uh, government. Today, as a party, a party of Industrial East of uh, Ukraine, uh, have the main task to unite the forces together, efforts together with the President of Ukraine in modernizing the economy and launching the innovation and investment system of development and to carry out radical and proactive reforms in social sphere. Proceeding from this, our main task will be struggle against poverty. In order to overcome poverty, the state should annually allocate no less than one billion dollars, which can only be affordable uh, by a dynamic and profitable economy. 
At the same time, we uh, need to reform the shadow economy, uh, the, which uh, gives uh, a basis for economic and political corruption. This problem is an extraordinary, complicated one, not only for political parties, but for the political society in general. Creating a public and socially oriented eco economy should pursue at, uh, at least two goals. The first in the political sphere implies that business and political power shall be separated, which would enable us to put an end to political corruption, a permanent detonator of our conflicts. In order to do it, we need to create a new system of relations between the government and entrepreneurs, which will be based on the idea of sovereign man mandate within the framework of the all national strategy. We must create transparent conditions for legalizing revenue, which would result in attracting no less than 30 to 35 billion US dollars, and would also set up soft conditions for political consequences of the said uh, legalization, legalization. This may only be possible under the conditions of a stable political regi regime and a reasonable compromise um, across the political spectrum. Furthermore, each and every Ukrainian should be turned into a responsible national investor. He or she should develop feeling of trust to the state and its agency. I have to admit that at the moment in Ukraine, the trust to authority is at its lowest. In this context, it is of pr paramount importance to us to stop the decrease uh, in uh, profitability in the key strategic fields, metallurgical, chemical, and machine building. In order to do it, we need to swiftly implement a program aimed at fighting and, uh, the rising prices, the prices of natural gas in the first place. At the same time, we need to clearly define new investment strategies, abandon the priority borrowing of borrowing, and allow for a broad access of foreign investment to the key fields of economy. In this context, we need to resolve the issues of a strategic program of uh, exhausting assets. In short, the country des desperately needs a new strategy of investment breakthrough uh, and management of large-scale projects. This may only be feasible under the condition of common position of the president, the parliament, and the government, and it should also will uh, win the support of the informed public opinion. opinion. Of uh, majority importance is the adoption of the program of demographic development of Ukraine. To this end, we shall allocate no less than 5% of the national budget to the improvement of the quality of life efforts aimed at the preventive measures in the system of health care and prolongation of productive uh, span of life. I would like to remind you that Ukraine uh, is a place uh, where Chernobyl, uh, a site of Chernobyl, the most contaminated place on Earth. The fourth uh, nuclear reactor of the power plant is still breathing through the cracks of the protective sarcophag. Ukraine has the largest river system in Europe and it also suffers from most of contamination of the water bodies. The number of man-made uh, incidents and catastrophes in Ukraine is on the rise and the ex uh, um, existing infrastructure has been worn out by as much as 70 to 80 percent and needs urgent capital investment and reforms. You probably will understand the ne need for the changes, reforms, and the tasks that, are, that uh, our government faces today. We also uh, think that we need to have a system of monitoring of major threats. Among them, I uh, see the uh, pre uh, uh, I, I see the uh, spread of tuberculosis, AIDS, and hepatitis. I would like to once again emphasize that the only way for Ukraine to resolve all of these issues are to unite around the political uh, will based on national pragmatism. I would suggest that all political forces in the country should adhere to the principles that must become the defining force after the coming election, united people, united power. We need to buy it for a farewell to, to historic Roman romanticism. 
build on myths and proceed to the politi politics of uh, national pragmatism. To me personally, the new choice of strate strategies is not so much connected to the choice of the political model of government, but rather to a uh, lucid uh, definition of where our national economy should be in the world, division of markets, labor resources, and strategic investment. We ir urgently need to overcome crisis tendencies in our policy in the first place. Proceeding from the about, the other challenge Ukraine is facing today is the uh, selection of geopolita geopolitical vector. Ukrainian uh, politicians do not have a clear-cut answer to this question. I am sure of the fact that the majority of our society firmly supports the European choice. Ukraine is a European country, and it must become a member of the European Union. A number of people living in the region bordering uh, with the Russian Federation believe that the Ukrainian economy today does not stand any chance to the competitor without the uh, Russian energy resources and Russian um, uh, market. And that's why they believe uh, that uh, we need a dynamic partnership relations with the Russian Federation. A philosophical basis for this way of thinking is the pan-Slavic idea about the unity of one people. The smallest group of uh, uh, citizens in Ukraine, I call them pessimists, does not believe in any unions and believe that Ukraine should become a neutral country and use its position and be a link between Europe and Asia. Uh, this uh, part, which is represented by politicians in the parliament, were the mo was the most opponent. Were the most opponent uh, with the discussion discussion about uh, Ukraine's accession to WTO. Uh, we should say that both government, parliamentary majority, and uh, deputies from opposition uh, did uh, a lot to have Ukraine uh, to to pass a law in Ukraine that would allow it to have not only technical but political uh, ambitions to join WTO. Uh, today, uh, it is very important to have the United States to give the support to Ukraine uh, in order uh, with regard to Ukraine's ambitions uh, to join WTO by the end of 2007. We are grateful to the government of the United States and citizens who support us in this movement as well, uh, we also thank for the uh, latest uh, developments and achievements when uh, finally the, uh, the jackson Benick Amendment was lifted. I share the opinion of the majority of Ukrainian politicians. I do not see any alter alternative to joining the European Union. At this point in time, this is the only real positive development in our long-lasting dialogue with the United Europe. We would, uh, despite the fact that uh, mutual relation with the European Union are expanding with every passing year, nevertheless, uh, Ukraine's sh plans remain the major. Uh, sh sh will uh, understand its movement to the European Union th first, maybe through uh, associated membership, zone of free trade, and after that, come to the partnership and membership. We understand that uh, uh, people can say that this task should be done at home and addressed at home. Yes, we understand that that the answer uh, mostly depends upon us, but we do not understand why during the discussion about the accession to European Union by, by other countries such as Turkey, Ukraine is viewed uh, uh, behind uh, the list of the countries which today are not only competing with us, but probably have less uh, achievements in economic and dem democratic development. Uh, Ukraine today uh, feels uh, as a part of Europe and the challenges that Europe faces, Ukraine believes ha uh, 
them their own too. I would like to uh, focus on the latest discussion er about the development of uh, American uh, anti-missile missile systems in Europe. I would like to talk about the diversification of energy supply to Europe and uh, regulation of frozen conflicts, global changes, and all of these strategic uh, issues for our country is are as important as for Europe because we believe that being in globalized society, we should have uh, clear answers to our questions and have uh, uh, consolidated responsibilities for our decisions. We are ready to take responsibilities for a uh, solution of uh, European and other global issues with our strategic partners. And those strategic partners are United States, European Union, and the Russian Federation. Ukraine thoroughly monitored the discussion between presidents of the United States and Russia regarding AMD in Europe because this issue pertains to stability and security in the global context. This is why the official opposition of Ukraine is regard of this deployment in Czech Republic and Poland of the American AMD system must proceed from the na national interests of our country and be very well thought through and tolerant. We have two radar systems in Mukachevo and Sevastopol where fate may not but impact the str strategy of Ukraine's positioning in the modern world. Cooperation between Ukraine and Russia in the oil and gas field is the key aspect not only in the Russian Federation, Ukraine, Russian Ukrainian relations, but also in the cooperation of Kiev and Moscow with the European Union and the United States. Uh, the demand for energy resources in Europe is growing, especially in view of the decrease of clay ma uh, mining home mining and the lack of alternate alternative routes for energy supply. In the future for us and for Europeans as well as Americans, it would be beneficial to have balanced partnership relation with Russia and intergovernment level. But it would like to understand that should be uh, we should have partnership relationship or both with the European countries, American uh, partners and the Russian Federation. I am uh, sure positive that Ukraine has intention to continue its close cooperation with the European Union and the United States in strengthening guarantee for energy supply to Europe, diversification of energy sources, <coughs> improvement of energy efficiency and energy conservation. We also are ready to par uh, participate in implementation of joint energy policy of European Union. In that regard, we should move to a new structure of energy consumption based on the use of renewable energy sources. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I will not be candid with you if I do not touch upon the issues of the Ukraine's accession to NATO. This topic is uh, was discussed with Pre Viktor Yushchenko, President of Ukraine. I also discussed this issue with Prime Minister of, U of Ukraine, Viktor Yanukovych. I want to inform you that today uh, the answer that I, I am going to give you is the joint vision and joint understanding of these politicians and political forces that represent these uh, that are represented by these politicians. There is no doubt today th that there is an extensive and uh, continuous dialogue uh, within separate projects between Ukraine, between Ukraine and NATO, and we do not turn. Uh, return to the review of this these projects. In Ukraine, we are discussing the issue of integration, that is membership in NATO. We should uh, look for answers and uh, find a motivation to find answers that would be adequate to the uh, questions of the society. We talked with President that having a discussion in the society and having some kind of survey indicators that give us today uh, not talk about this issue actively since uh, the issue of integration is not a timely one for Ukraine. We decided and we uh, uh, asked the government to make commitment to 
provide information, objective information, uh, to the society to make sure that the society at some point of time will be able to make a decision and choice. Thus, uh, we do not have any basis or need to, uh, to address this issue immediately. And politicians came to the conclusion that this issue, if needed, will be addressed later during the referendum. I think that I will not uh, 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 disclose very big secrets if I will focus on the third aspect of our challenges that uh, should uh, be today dis should be discussed today and answered today. Those are the issues of expansion of bilateral relations between the United States and Ukraine and development of democracy together with our very important strategic partner. Analyzing realistically our relations of Ukraine and the United States, I made a conclusion for myself that you sh could uh, come uh, many times and talk nicely, uh, give arguments, but we need to make steps, steps that would have some actions behind them. And you, being experienced representatives of your country, make assess assess assessment to the politicians through the assessment of their actions. That is why I am going to talk about the specific steps and actions that are needed to be taken or initiated or accented or uh, underlined in the country to be solved. I think that our pragmatic steps shall uh, be taken by Ukraine and the United States uh, within the uh, development of uh, bilateral relations. First, implementation of policy to improve conditions for businesses in Ukraine. Second, we need to make sure to coordinate with the central government and some industry association in Ukraine, make improvements in organizing ingress in industry business forums to help Ukrainian producers enter American market as well as American producers enter Ukrainian one. Third, enhance existing mechanism to coordinate efforts of Ukrainian government government agency in agencies in improvement of investments climate in Ukraine. Fourth, expansion of regional cooperation between oblasts in Ukraine and states in the United States. I know that Congress has interest in possible wide involvement of Ukraine in the projects dedicated to strengthening democracy and fight against corruption with Millennium Challenge for Corporation. I want to confirm Ukraine's interest in participation in these projects and readiness to make them effective instrument in assist assisting deep transformation in Ukraine. We discussed these issues yesterday and possible participation of Ukraine in these projects. Ukrainian democracy needs political support, new ideas, new investments, and convictions, and I believe that Millennium Challenge Corporation harmonious is a harmonious combination of all three key components. It is my pleasure to note that joint efforts of Ukrainian government, Jewish community, and international Jewish organizations give their results. Ukraine is becoming stronger as a peaceful country where representatives of all national and ethnic groups felt feel at home. I am positive that Ukraine can be a role model for neighboring countries in its cons um, consistent support of interracial and interethical uh, peace. I would like to underscore the following 
uh, there can be no room for any um, other for any um, intolerance in our country. I am positive that the American government will continue to adequately view political processes which are occurring in our young democratic country. Americans demonstrated with their actions that resolutions to internal standoff in Ukraine is possible only through the establishment of political dialogue. At the same time, it was emphasized that Washington will not interfere in the development in our country and will not take sides while waiting for compromise at the negotiation table. In the con this context, international political standoff in Ukraine was viewed not as democracy crisis, but rather as one of the signs of lengthy processes in establishment of a lawful democratic state. For Ukraine, it is critical to have Washington not to view relations with Ukraine through the prism of its relations with Russia. We in Party of Vision are positive that Ukraine will become a key link between West and East in the development of joint strategic project creating conviction, con uh, convincing perspective for um, convergence of culture and civilization. Ukraine has its own geographical political mission with, uh, uh, which is European in its content and format. Thus, I want to underscore that our priorities still are strengthening democracy if we want to build Ukraine as a modern Ukrainian, a modern e uh, European country, and this very wish is the basis for the work of our parliamentary co coalition. With that regard, I would like to address to my new and old friends in this room. I would like to call upon you on the other side of Atlantic Ocean to focus on uh, uh, um, practical implementation of development and mission a current and prospective plans and actively use existing opportunities for the prosperity of our nations. Thank you very much. Uh, Офіційно ця сесія повинна закінчитися через 10 хвилин, але я дозволю прийти. So we'll go on uh, until about uh, 12 20 or 12:30 uh, because so many interesting issues have been put on on the table. Uh, let me first ask if um, uh, Deputy Siatich would like to add anything or if if uh, David Messner would like to add anything and then I'll open it up. I think we should go right to the Q&A. Okay, we'll go right to the floor. Um, a few ground rules. I'm going to ask people to identify themselves. This is a bilingual session. You can speak in Ukrainian or in English, but please use the microphone so the interpreter can uh, understand what's going on in this room as well. So we'll go right down here. Please identify yourself, sir. My name is uh, Mubain Batualtan. I'm uh, from the American Association of Crimean Tatars uh, in New York, and also from the um, Crimean Tatar Research and uh, Information Center uh, in uh, Maryland. Honorable uh, Deputy uh, Bagatorova, uh, Crimean Tatars, uh, Crimean Tatar diaspora in the United States strongly uh, supports a peaceful, uh, stable and democratic Ukraine. However, uh, uh, it's been 15 years since the uh, Ukrainian, uh, Ukraine uh, declared its independence, but the Crimean Tatars uh, uh, economic and uh, political uh, uh, rights uh, continue to be uh, blatantly violated in Crimea. 60% of the Crimean Tatars are uh, still uh, unemployed. Crimean Tatars have uh, difficulty uh, uh, obtaining land in their ancestral homeland. And uh, uh, 63 years uh, since their mass deportation, 50% uh, of the Crimean Tatars are still in their places of uh, 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 deportation in Central Asia. Okay, I'm, I'm we should bring this to a question. My question uh, to you, uh, Honorable uh, Deputy, is that if your uh, party uh, uh, comes to power after these elections, uh, what uh, uh, do you have any plans uh, to resolve the uh, ongoing Crimean Tatar problems in Crimea, uh, in Ukraine? 
Thank you. Thank you for your uh, question. I would like to agree with you right away that 15 years of uh, independence of Ukraine, and we still have some issues, and with regard to the group of uh, population you are mentioning, which uh, historically has to return and the issue has to be fairly s resolved on the territory of Crimea. I believe that what I me said, absence of the experience, lack of experience of Ukrainians to uh, manage all the issues, economic, political, ethical, lack of opportunities to create programs and managing those programs, lack of, during all this year, uh, lack of financial resources, did not give an opportunity our government to make some steps to uh, improve their life and also reinstall fairness towards Crimean Tatars. That's why I believe that our party has the program similar to, the, to other political forces that first of all, uh, uh, liberal, uh, we need to provide liberal and economic goals in Crimea. We, bel we, uh, try we have a goal to create a tourist resort, tourist area in Crimea that would be attractive for other citizens and citizens of other countries uh, where uh, Crimean Tatars would be able to find jobs and to have good quality of life. I know that this problem is of great concern for deputies and government, but problem is not only related to legislative framework, but we are talking also about absence of monitoring and implementation of economic strategy to support Crimean Tatars, and that's why uh, we disperse the resources that we have. Of course, this issue has to be on the front burner, not only during the election to be raised. I think that uh, today, none of the government can uh, uh, ignore the problems of Crimean Tatars and ignore economic development in Crimea and ignore the uh, support for national minorities and ignore their, uh, uh, their promises to Ukrainians and the needs of Ukrainians. Arkady. Arkady Moshes, uh, співробітник фінського зовнішнього політичного інституту. Finnish uh, 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 Institute here working in uh, Woodrow Wilson Center. Thank you very much for your very interesting and balanced uh, presentation. We talked a lot about uh, challenges, about dependence of Ukraine uh, on monopoly on energy resources and dependence on energy resources. The Anti-Crisis Coalition is at power for the past year. What specific steps did you make to overcome this dependence? If your political force will become a part of a uh, government coalition after election, what do you offer to your partners? Thank you. Maybe my answer, uh, you will not like my answer, but um, in my political activities, I uh, believe that the most important thing is the communication with people, and specifically when I represent not only some political forces, but also represent Ukrainian citizens, I should be responsible and candid. Can we, in one year, overcome this dependence? In two years, we can criticize previous government with different last names of prime ministers. We had our prime ministers among them, not our prime ministers among them. Today, we are saying that Ukraine is not closer to uh, resolving the problem of energy dependency. Today, Ukraine has several projects which uh, to some, to different degrees are ready to be implemented and have different uh, level of uh, uh, 
um, uh, management, uh, but we are not closer to uh, address this problem that is getting energy independence. I believe the problem is not of government's project or pro government pro program. The problem is that we do not have systemic view and strategy for energy security in Ukraine. Uh, and specifically with regard to energy independence. That is why through this view, through this position, we have to address the issue of energy uh, independence. And this issue will touch upon the uh, development of transparent mechanisms of cooperation with the Russian f f Federation and the United States and uh, with us as a country, a transit country that that does not maybe uh, ev ev uh, appreciate its uh, benefits of transporting country of gas from Russia to European countries. And my task today is to uh, create a discussion in the society about the need of such strategy and elevate the level of this discussion to higher level of decision making a process, uh, not only politicians. We should involve experts who knows about the details of the development of such strategies that would sh have some short-term and long-term benefit and all the weaknesses uh, that we would uh, have in as a result of implementing of this strategy. I believe that issue of energy independence in Ukraine is important not only for Ukrainians or Americans or Europeans, it's also important for Russians uh, to make sure that they can also identify their leverages of influence on the countries, of the on the neighboring countries who uh, consume their gas and oil, and it's not only Ukraine. Ukraine. That is why I believe, answering candidly to your answer, I would see my task and my initiative in our, my party uh, to, uh, regardless of uh, the results of the election on September 30th, I see uh, the need to, ni to initiate the development, discussion, and implementation of the strategy that would work for many, many years, for 10 deca decades. My colleague would like to add a few words. Yeah, first, I have to ask yeah, around the door clear uh, for fire code reasons. Thank you. So, I would like to add to what Rachel Vasilyevna said. Taking into account the reduce of uh, development of gas in Norway and North Sea, those are issues of energy dependence than see from Russian Federation. This is not only the Ukrainian problem, this is a problem uh, for Europe in general. Thus, this problem has to be addressed through negotiation with the supplier, with Gazprom, not only by Ukraine, but European Union too. I see the reduction of energy dependence uh, in Ukraine through the implementation of energy efficient technologies and the government of Viktor Yanukovych already implementing the program of implementation of use of energy efficient technology. Unfortunately, we have a large economy inherited from the Soviet Union that uses energy as raw material, that is chemical uh, uh, industry. And the changes in economy of Ukraine uh, is one of the goals, uh, one of the program goals uh, in the program of the party. Uh, and of course, we cannot achieve it in one year. But I want to go to the back of the room and try to give different parts of the room opportunity. So we'll go there and then we'll try to move back down here. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Tatiana Varashko, Golos America. Yeah, I'll ask you in full language. Uh, uh, how can you formulate the major goal of your trip to Washington, D.C.? Is Does it include the improvement of image of the party of regions in the Washington, among the Washington establishment? What kind of stereotypes uh, did you face uh, during your uh, visit to the United States? Thank you for the question. In reality, uh, my goal is very simple. I wanted personally to come uh, to introduce myself and to meet as many people, as many representatives as possible from NGOs, 
from uh, I meet citizens uh, of Ukraine who work here in different uh, entities. I wanted to meet with the uh, Ukrainian diaspora, diaspora with uh, State Department and other organizations and agencies that want to communicate and talk with us. As a politician who is engaged in politics for so many years, I would like to tell you what we are doing today. I would like to start to overcome the myth that was created around our political force, political force that is represented by, by bandits, uh, people who are not concerned about Ukraine, Ukrainian uh, citizens, uh, the people who are not involved in implementation of national programs, etc. You know, there is a myth, and I believe that you probably can help out here that with the, during the peak of political uh, political uh, uh, fight, the name region becomes a label for people. Can you say that your political opponents are enemies, enemies who support this political force? I believe that this is a very dangerous situation. As a person who uh, worked for many years as a physician who saved tens of thousands of people's life. I was donor, regardless who was next to me, whether it was a Russian or Ukrainian or member of Ukrainian rebels or some a person who worked, uh, who was fighting or, or, uh, within the Soviet armor. It didn't matter because it was an individual who needed assistance, medical assistance, and it didn't matter to me because that person was a citizen of Ukraine. And I believe that this label that is tried to be put on our uh, again uh, uh, used uh, is uh, very dangerous for Ukrainians for the process which Ukrainian political nations are going through, nation is going through. We are just creating a joint, a united political nation in Ukraine. And, depe it, and uh, it depends how tolerant our politicians to the challenges. Uh, we will be able to overcome these problems in Ukraine so quickly, and we would say that we are united Ukrainian nation, sovereign country with a united political interest and national interest. I do not want to just talk about it, uh, but uh, if you don't want to, you don't have to come. So I decided to come. The, the major, the major uh, difficulties are the discussions of hard questions, but nothing happens without dialogue. If you do not hear our position, you will have your own idea. Maybe your idea is better than mine. Maybe your position is different and I would like to change it. Maybe in other cases you can um, convince me that I am not as democratic as uh, you would like me uh, to, to be. And maybe you have some reasons behind it. And I believe that this open and candid communication and dialogue will allow uh, me to tell you about our intentions and about us and also inform the electorate that uh, uh, I represent, which is the eastern and southern part of our uh, country. I will tell them about uh, these meetings, about your support and assistance to the Ukrainian citizens, and maybe we will be able to help them to be more uh, politically active to uh, increase or reduce the support to political forces that are not uh, that do not carry out the uh, commitments and be more uh, uh, and, and talk more about uh, these issues. And these are the processes that are taken into account during visits like this and uh, dialogue like this. Today, I can say that not uh, I did not have too many meetings. But I can tell you that all were very impressive. Uh, impressive because there was a high level of interest, willingness to assist, and I did not feel that 
that uh, today, towards the political force that I represent, there is any un inadequate issues or questions or questions that could offend us. We have a dialogue, a discussion, even though it's not a simple one. I'm going to go to the gentleman right there in front of you, Markian. We'll come around this way, and if we have time, we'll go in the back. But there, there are about a half dozen people who have asked questions, so please be to the point. Thank you very much. Uh, Vladimir Karamurza, Telecompany RTVI. Uh, Vladimir Karamurza, uh, the, the, RTVI RTVI the RTVI company. The question is the same about the stereotype that was created in Russian and Western press that Orange Forces, Orange Coalition uh, somehow is oriented towards the United States and West in the uh, politics, and your uh, party is oriented towards the Russian Federation. Is it a true stereotype or not? Is it adequate? You know. I would like to answer the following to your question. We were tried to make to be made a party of one region, uh, Donetsk region. Later on, our program and support among the citizens of Ukraine identified us as an all Ukrainian party, as a party which program was approved by the Ministry of Justice. And we can answer clearly that our program is in line with the Constitution and laws of Ukraine and national interests of Ukraine. We are talking here about methods of implementation of our policy, what kind of partners we are going to find in, the, uh, in our moves, um, in our program. I know that our political force is not anti-Russian, but our political force is uh, pro-Ukrainian. Our latest steps and actions showed that we implement the programs which are in line with national interests of Ukraine. They are clearly uh, put forward the interests of common people, of regular citizens. Can we uh, have dialogue with the Russian Federation and the United States and find consensus in the positions where we don't have one? Of course, not all always everything uh, comes uh, uh, happens and that's why we see some perspectives of the development of diplomatic relations with our strategic partners only through the programs of national interest and protection of national interests of Ukrainians this, this gentleman right here you had a question Ubas. Uh, Robert Krauss with QED here in uh, Washington, D.C., and the Agrarian Markets Development Institute in Kiev. You mentioned the importance of both energy efficiency and renewable energy. Uh, as I'm sure you know, with over 42 million hectares of black earth, uh, Ukraine could and should become a global leader in the production and consumption of biofuels. So two questions. One. Does the party of regions agree with the principle that the development of the biofuels industry should be done by private sector companies, not state companies? And secondly, does the party of regions agree with the principle that the development should be done on a competitive free market basis, starting with the repeal of the law that grants a monopoly for bioethanol production to the current alcoholic spirits manufacturers? Thank you for your answer. Uh, there is a simple answer, uh, question. Th there is a simple answer to it. I can say only one word that President likes it, uh, and my opponent likes it. Yes. And we support the development of biofuel, uh, and we are initiative uh, uh, people's deputies that represent party of regions are uh, initi initiators of the development of the law, and the, the draft of the law bill was already uh, uh, passed in first reading. We believe that private company and private ownership in this case would be able to compete 
on a very high level with the government. Maybe it is not possible to solve tomorrow, but there is a movement towards it, and we understand it. And since in our faction there are many people with economic education who are focusing on and uh, support the liberal model of uh, economy development, and thus I believe that we will not uh, have, uh, we will not create hurdles to this kind of development. And my answer to your second question is also yes. You know, Ukraine is at the edge of, uh, of the accession to WTO, which uh, includes the equal access to the market of uh, Ukraine for export and import to of all country of all uh, companies, regardless of the country of origin. That's why I would like to second to Bogatyrova with regard to the development of liberal economy model as to the. Uh, monopoly of the government, uh, on of state monopoly on the development of uh, a tail uh, spirits. That issue will be discussed a little bit later, but that is not related to the issue of the production of uh, uh, reps oil and uh, uh, sunflower oil in a Ukrainian agricultural uh, complex. You see how much we prepare. Do you know even how it is manufactured, how it is produced? We have uh, only time for one more question, and at least a half dozen people have asked for the floor. I'll, I'll point out that you will have an opportunity after the formal session to come up and ask your question. Uh, I'm going to go right here for the final formal question, and then others can come up after. Thank you, and I hope it's a good question. Ilona Mostipan, student of the American University of Washington. I have a question with regard to fight against corruption and crisis of uh, uh, government uh, procurement, what is going on there right now. I know that you resigned from the post of uh, tender chamber president. Tell me about the new law of uh, government procurement. Why you resigned? Is this law better? If yes, what it will improve? And in general, what uh, limits of party of regions will uh, use or use in the past to uh, limit, to curb the corruption uh, in Ukraine. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your tender question. Tender With regard of tender, chamber will be related to corruption uh, because uh, tenders uh, and bids are uh, is not only a problem, uh, are not only a problem of corruption in Ukraine, but also in other countries. And today, the tender chamber uh, in Ukraine, where I was uh, uh, for about a year an honorable president, is an NGO that <coughs> has a uh, wide uh, network, but a company and the right of NGO uh, are uh, uh, such that it is impossible to influence many procedures and provide transparency uh, during procurement. A large sum of uh, government money that are dedicated for uh, bidding processes uh, by different uh, agencies, regional administrations, oblast administration is impossible to control, to monitor without some administrative measures, without having administrative measures, oh, but rather having people who can check something based on their volunteers and NGO status. So thus, when I was an honorable president, we tried to do something in several areas. First, we tried to do an audit of these activities to see what is going going on and where is the weakness so where w which has to be corrected uh, in order to improve these activities at least at the beginning. Unfortunately, uh, we did not succeed. Uh, the NGO doesn't have enough money to invite independent auditors and using commercial money was uh, not uh, possible, not feasible. The next idea changes and amendments to the law. We worked on that. And and according to the uh, cabinet of ministers and the financial sector, these changes should have improved the situation of monitoring of use of uh, 
um, budgetary money during tender procedures. This uh, law passed in uh, March, in December, uh, was passed and was entered into effect in March of this year. And since March of this year, we saw uh, problems in the whole system of tender uh, and uh, procurement. A lot of complaints came in, and we came to the conclusion that the law and the mechanisms that are in place and the control and responsible are not adequate to overcome corruption in the country and provide opportunities to use budgetary money effectively. In addition, uh, there was a political fight uh, started, uh, a political fight star has started and uh, uh, intrigues and uh, irresponsible uh, attitude in this area got to the level when it was better to leave the tender chamber that is una unable to control this process. But at the same time, we ask the experts who can today assist in the development of effective bill that should be passed by the next Verkhovna Rada. The law did not enter into effect because President did not sign it, the one that you were talking about, and President, together with an, uh, analysis, analysts, decided not to sign it, and we talked about uh, it with him for a long time. We, he agreed with me with the steps that I suggested to implement in the future. Thus, uh, we will have a lot of political component in this issue, but with regard to economic uh, component and the issues of tenders, which are uh, uh, source for corruption, we still have that issue. Uh, by the way, I would like to say that uh, Viktor Yanukovych's government um, uh, started uh, about six, seven months ago, started to focus on this issue and attract the attention of politicians and government people and started to work with president to uh, regulate this area. At this point, the issue is not very clear, but at least I believe there is no politician in the country and not a single person who would be stand aside on uh, this issue, which is very good. It is very good because for a politician, it is very important to manage political crisis. There is a crisis in tender procurement. We have a uh, build, uh, have experience manage these kind of crises, we will be able to address this issue quickly and seriously. I'd like to thank Deputy Borgotaryova and Deputy Syatic. I apologize to those of you uh, who haven't been had the opportunity to ask your question, uh, but we're already well over uh, time. And uh, it's always a good sign when there are more questions than there's time because it means the speaker has been provocative in a good sense of the word. <laughs> I, I also uh, want to thank David Metzner. Uh, this is a uh, Woodrow Wilson Center uh, deputy forum, and I'd like to thank David for his support, his support on the board, his support with this event. And um, I'd like to thank all of you for showing up in the middle of June.